Hello there and welcome. Is Google about to pull the rug out of content marketing? You know, again? Will AI-driven organic search fundamentally change the way that we offer up our thought leadership, our inspiration, our entertainment, our great marketing content? Will Google introduce a whole bunch of new stuff at last week's developers conference and want to know more about what this means for you? Well, this is five minutes of what you need to lead in marketing. Let's roll. Hello everybody, Robert Rose here with the news. It is what's new, but really, as you always, always know, it's what's important in the world of marketing. And for the best and best practices, as you also always, always know, you can head on over to contentmarketinginstitute.com. So last week, Google held their annual I.O. Developers Conference, which is, of course, their gathering where they announce hashtag all the things that they're working on developing. Google being Google, of course, most of the developments here will be on their main product and revenue model of search and advertising, and which, of course, are a great interest to marketers everywhere. There were, of course, improvements announced to Google Maps. This new immersive view for routes looks really cool. Uh, and a magic editor for photos driven by AI will give users a much more sophisticated capability when it comes to editing images. Another new feature called Magic Compose, yeah, Google really seems to be trying to equate this AI with magic stuff. Anyway, it's an AI-driven rewriting tool that can rewrite text to be more positive, more professional, or, you know, written in the style of Shakespeare. I can see it now. My new office reply might be, from office bounds I'll journey far away this week of May, my presence to delay. But fear not, my return is nigh on May the 22nd by heaven's sky. Should queries arise or issues hold their sway, I beseech thee, submit a trouble ticket, I say. And through this humble plea, aid shall be sought and all quandaries with care shall be brought. Anyway, I'm not losing my day job. <laughs> the biggest news might have been Google's announcement that it is not only removing the waitlist for BARD, its competitor to ChatGPT, of course, but it's making it available in English and also Japanese and Korean. And BARD can now surface images in its responses. And not only that, it'll be generating some of these images with an integration with Adobe's Firefly that gives you an ability to edit or modify them in Adobe Tools. Hmm. Now that's an interesting thing to keep watch on. But for marketers, for marketers, maybe the biggest announcement was almost a throwaway line in all the cool new features being announced. Google plans to change the way that it'll present organic search results. It will be no surprise that it'll start looking to artificial intelligence to help with that display. This is a fascinating development and portends some very interesting implications for us as marketers and content creators about the way that we care about organic search. So... In the demonstration, Google used an example where someone, presumably a parent, might ask the search engine where a family with young children and a dog would prefer, Arches National Park or Bryce Canyon. Then the search engine returned a lengthy answer detailing the pros and cons on each. As Google search VP Kathy Edwards said, well, now search does the heavy lifting for you. But does it? I mean, does it really? A lot of media outlets reporting on this demonstration are reporting that, well, this whole thing could should turn us upside down, concern us, worry us, and yes, they even wrote this, perhaps it will be deadly. Deadly, they said. Here's what struck me about the content returned by Google in this search result. If you actually read the response, and by the way, I would really recommend you do that, it reads very much like what's now beginning to become a classically formatted generative AI response. Very logical, well-constructed, chock-full of adjectives, and ultimately providing meh value. So as we can see, it basically goes through and pulls relevant but general features from both. It first tries to distinguish Bryce from Arches by saying that both prohibit dogs on all trails. Now, they also say Bryce Canyon has two paved trails that allow dogs. Now, that's a stretch because if you do just a bit of digging into each of their websites, well, you'll find that the policy is exactly the same at both parks. Dogs are only allowed on paved roads. It's just that Bryce, well, a few of their paved roads are also part of some trails. Anyway, not to quibble, but isn't that kind of the point of all this? There are two paragraphs that then try to draw distinctions between Bryce Canyon and Arches, but there are actually no distinctions made, except for one very small sentence which seems to come by analysis of consumer reviews, which says, some people say there's more variety at Arches than Bryce. But what that variety means, not terribly clear, and honestly, that wasn't part of the question to begin with. 
So then Google offers up three other options to explore further, and these appear much like any other search result would fare. And it would be clear this is where Google would put in sponsored links to keep that revenue gravy train a rolling down the tracks. Now, I don't mean to pick on Google here. This tech is new, and it is just a demonstration of what may be coming. But what I want to point out is that the knee-jerk reaction that some of the media is having is, well, one we shouldn't have. You know, most of the media playing out that our search traffic is going to diminish or this is going to kill publishing. You know, that's maybe where Slate comes up with this whole deadly idea, which just amazes me. Anyway, my take is that we need to see beyond the glossy and sparkly demonstration here and truly think about what may happen. What we currently know is that search engines like Google and YouTube and Bing and Amazon and other verticalized products will eventually evolve something like what Google demonstrated. The question is, what do we do about it now and what do we think about doing long term? And from my perspective, well, there at least seems to be two safe bets that we can make given the unknown of the future of AI and web search. The first is, be as useful as you can possibly be. Put simply, your content and marketing strategy should be focused not on just getting people to your sphere of influence, your site, your email, your content hub, your store. It should immediately focus on how you keep people at your content. Put simply, how do you mitigate the uselessness of search full stop? where your site becomes the bookmarked source of trusted things, given your point of view on a particular set of topics. Now, the second is investing in owned media, and specifically understanding how to create content given the context of all the questions being asked. You see, there's no doubt that the expertise that powers AI search, as it did in the demo, relies heavily on accessing owned media. But it's also equally true that large language models learn in a very specific way. Ask ourselves if we should be looking at our content through the lens of a user who is trying to distinguish between the important aspects of a question, such as which park is better for a family with a dog. It was clear from my very short 10 minutes of digging through both parks' websites, they did a great job of saying why dogs aren't great to the park, you know, warning you that they can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. But neither of the parks explained in a paragraph or a page what would be great about bringing a pet or kids to the park. Put simply, what haven't we written about but should? On our websites, our blog, our resource center, we often talk about the greatness of our business, the greatness of our products, the awesome features, and our industry. But what's not so great? Who are we not for? Let's start making distinctions to make it clear and help those that are trying to make distinctions. We can't know where all this is going to go, but what we can know is, yeah, it's going. I'll come back to something I've said on every AI-oriented discussion I've had this year. Whether we ask how AI will replace us or how AI will change us, either way, we'll be right. But what do you think? AI and organic and search. What do you think about the changes? What are you going to do to change? Let me know in the comments. But for now, well, that's five minutes of what you need that can hopefully help you lead in your marketing strategy. I'm Robert Rose, and remember, as always, it's your story to tell. Tell all of it, even the distinctive bits. Well, I'll see you next week.